we are going to start with um, our first guest, who is uh, Essa Bella Bonner. Bella Bonner, she is an activist and organizer uh, who grew up locally um, in a biracial household. Last summer, um, moved by the killings of Breonna Taylor in Kentucky and George Floyd in Minneapolis, through her organization, Blended Bridges, she helped organize a march and rally on um, June the 3rd on Westcliff Drive. Um, and, and there was also another one after that in Capitola. Um, Bella, thanks so much for joining us and welcome. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. One of the things that I have been uh, asking our 21 for 21 um, uh, 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 subjects was to kind of go back and remember the drama of the year. And I want to ask you about that June 3rd rally. Um, it was pretty amazing. It, um, it went from, um, was it, it ended at Lighthouse Field, right? And it started at the wharf, am I right? Correct, yeah, I started at the Dream Inn in the parking lot there. Tell us about how that came about and um, uh, what the, it was what, a week or so after the um, death of George Floyd, is that right? Yeah, right, right around there. Um, and you know how that really came came to be was you know there had been a series of other actions, um, and even down to in my workplace. And I found myself super disappointed by the folks that were centering themselves. I felt like we, as a community, were missing a key opportunity to really center and hear from unheard voices in our community. Um, and so I really wanted to create a space that would uplift and center, you know, Black and our people of color community members and what it really means to, to live here and, and what it, we go through. Um, so that was the goal was really to center and amplify those voices. And it turned out, you know, more, more beautifully than ever we ever could have imagined. Um, hearing from high schoolers up to you know, adults who have been here for many years, um, hearing how things haven't changed um, for a lot of our high schoolers now um, really, really was eye opening. Um, and I was, I was really grateful for the people that were brave enough to share their stories um, that day and, and for the event. That, I mean, you had, um, you had some flyers passed around, maybe a little social media, and that was it. Yeah, really, it was Instagram and Facebook, and it it just took over, which was incredible. Tell me a little bit about uh, about the scene that day. Were you shocked when you saw the people coming out? Did you anticipate that? I I don't think you could ever anticipate that. Um, you know, I just remember turning around. I think the second parking lot, and just seeing there was still a flood coming from the dream in and it was it was it was a really cool feeling just it was the most sense of community I've really ever felt while living here. Obviously these weren't all your friends and relatives you had to reach out in, in into the community um, in a very impressive way um, so the the march ended up at Lighthouse field where there was speakers and uh, tell me what the vibe was at uh, the at that um, at that point yeah the energy was was remarkable it was just buzzing um, you know definitely didn't imagine the crowds we didn't have microphones set up to uh, to amplify as big as as big that were there but um, you know, it was, it was definitely uplifted and you could tell people were there to listen. And that was, that was the goal. And, you know, it was really remarkable in that sense. Did you speak yourself? I did. I, I had gone back and forth. I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, I, I spoke and brought up just how we can't, everyone has this moment it feels like um and now it's it's a matter of really keeping it alive and not letting it be you know five years from now um new news to people we really want to end it um and so that that's really what i what my message was that day 
I'm sure it was very tough because there was a lot of rage. There was a lot of grief. There was a lot of mourning. I mean, this was, this was not a, 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 a moment of celebration. Um, how did you kind of calibrate the emotions of the crowd? I mean, what was that like? Were, were, was there a sense of anger and mourning and grief uh, there as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, everyone was angry. And I think one of the things that was really important to me to honor the victims um, you know, that were murdered was, was honoring them through a moment of silence and having thousands of people you know, kneel or just take that moment together um, is really powerful. And that's something that, you know, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. You know, it really was just so remarkable and the, the greatest sense of community um, and union and unity, I would say, um, but definitely a lot of pain and anger um, in trying to find the right, right way to channel, to channel that um, um, was important. Yeah, I imagine so. I imagine so. Obviously, Black people and African Americans are are a very distinct minority in Santa Cruz County. Um, you must have seen quite a few uh, out there that day, and there, I imagine, a sense of of what uh, you tell me, uh, solidarity of 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 connection. Oh, absolutely. Um, I would say, especially for for the first one, we had it in open mic forum, and so you know, really it was me looking out into, into the crowd and people kind of were coming towards the forefront. And so definitely feelings of solidarity um, and just, I see you and I feel your struggle. Um, you know, I know what it feels like to be here too. Um, definitely, you just through eye contact through that moment, but, but they know. Um, Bella Bonner uh, grew up locally and um... She is contributing an essay to a book that I'm editing uh, at the end of the year. And um, in that essay, you talk very movingly about kind of a moment where you kind of had your eyes opened a little bit. Um, and it had to do with the death of Trayvon Martin in uh, 2012. And of course, his trial was the next year in 2013. He was, he was a young man. I think he was your contemporary, right? Wasn't he? Uh, he was, he was, I think, 17 or so when he was killed. Mm -hmm. And um, he, um, his killer was acquitted um, through Florida's stand your ground law at the time. That moment, you were a teenager yourself. Tell me about that. Was that, um, that must have really kind of came out of left field and really kind of did a number on you. Yeah, um, you know, Trayvon and I were, were born in the same year um, and I was a junior in high school. And I just remember, you know, social media still to this day, you know, we're, we're seeing the power of the tool and also the downside, but, you know, came into the forefront through social media and, you know, was, was a flat out murder. It was an injustice and most of us saw it for what it was. And, I remember having a conversation with my mom and just, you know, breaking down and, you know, being like, I'm saying, you know, justice is going to handle this justice, the system will do the right thing. And she really paused. And I just remember that moment of like, you know, don't you want the system to do what it's supposed to do? Um, but she really didn't, didn't want to break my heart. She didn't want to tell me that, you know, these systems aren't meant for us um, at all. And that was, the first time I really saw that um, in the mainstream media, you know, so in your face, you see, you see it. And um, it was heartbreaking. It, it still is thinking about it. I just feel like he was a baby and he should still be here with us. Um, and so that really, it did change a lot of things, especially when, you know, the acquittal came through and, you know, you see the non-guilty verdict and it, it it just doesn't make sense. And to this day, it doesn't make sense um, what we continue to see. And so, you know, it's, it's, in my opinion, a disgrace how many lives it's taken for people to open their eyes. Um, and, you know, George, George Floyd, you know, these people aren't going to die in vain, and that's up to us. And so it's, I just think it needs to stop. And so I, it's a lot of pain, um, just, seen it continue to play out 
you know, not guilty over and over again. There were, of course, a lot of these kinds of killings before Trayvon and since. And, um, uh, but it seems that the deaths of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd this year represented some kind of tipping point uh, in the larger culture? Do you think that um, uh, it left an influence on the culture that perhaps the killings before it had not? Um, I think this year really was a different type of storm. You know, we were, it started with the Maude Arbery, you know, we're all at home, it's a pandemic, people are staying home and black people are still being murdered by the police, like how? Um, and so I think it kind of came with just this timing of people being at home, um, seeing it on your screen, social media, it just was really this cross between everything. I don't think, you know, there's anything more significant about these murders by the police than any other. I think it just really was the timing and the storm of 2020, um, kind right. of collectively. Right, and um, we're seeing things happen since then that perhaps we didn't even ever anticipate we would see that. Um, um, let me ask you about 2021 and going forward. Um, you're still a young person. You have a lot of uh, activism and organization in front of you. Um, uh, what are your plans going forward? I mean, is it, it you don't want to be in a position where you're just reacting to these things, right? You want to be proactive in a lot of ways and, and kind of build something that's not just reacting to the next killing. Um, yeah, for me right now, it's really trying to focus on, on joy and the health, um, you know, really focusing on Black Surf Club has been, you know, a really good outlet. I know it's very separate, but, you know, mental health is really important in this last year has been a lot. And so this next year, I plan on continuing to build community, um, you know, working on various advisory boards, um, working closely with the advisors on the Black Health Matters team. Um, is really important to focus on just longevity and really giving back to our communities in concrete, sustainable ways, I would say, is really where I, I plan to, you know, focus in on coming up. You mentioned the Black Surf Club earlier. I, I don't think a lot of people know what this is. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so Black Surf Club is, you know, really aiming to create a safe community space for our BIPOC community members to learn how to surf, um, focusing on our black community, but open to all people of color, um, really again, focusing on community building, um, joy and just being in a, in a safe space together. Um, and in my opinion, it's a form of reparations. You know, we have, we're funded solely by the community. Um, you know, all of our instructors are purely volunteers and so, um, really giving back to our community in a physical way uh, when we don't have many options right now is really important. Um, do you feel optimistic? I mean, it's, this is a loaded question to ask someone who is young because those of us who aren't young anymore, I mean, we, <laughs> it's, there's a different calculus. Um, you may live very deep into this century. Uh, how do you feel about the future? Um, I feel nervous. I, I'm hopeful that there's going to come a point where we stop allowing history to repeat itself. But, you know, until we start making some concrete changes and doing things differently, I'm hope cautiously hopeful. Um, but, you know, I'm, I really want to see things change. I want to see a different, I want it, I don't want it, you know, to all keep repeating itself. I, I don't want names to continue to be hashtags. So um, I really want to see concrete change that's tangible and, you know, happens swiftly. <laughs> well, I think it was MLK who said the arc of history bends towards justice, but some people have to do that bending. And I think you're one of those people. So, uh, so congratulations. And um, thank you, Bella Bonner, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.